Move over, Madam Web, because Ethan Cohen just brought out a movie that might rival you in terms of quality. 2024's Drive Away Dolls, a film that's a comedy, an action road trip adventure that's not a comedy or an action road trip adventure. Let's quickly talk about it. Ethan Cohen and his wife Trisha Cook have cooked up something pretty fantastic for somebody somewhere out there that's not me. I went with my buddy tonight to this film and I couldn't wait for it to be over. And the best part is it's not even 90 minutes long. Yet it feels like two hours. It kind of feels like an eternity. This is going to be a spoiler free review. If you like what I'm doing here, if you like the honest takes, please subscribe for more. I post movie reviews, rants, live streams every single week. Would love to have you stick around. Now I am going to give you a public service announcement because if you saw the trailer, which is pretty quick, it's under a minute and I, I understand why because there's not much outside of this trailer that's going to grab you. You'll see that the film stars Pedro Pascal and Matt Damon. <laughs> it doesn't. It does not. They're in this film less than the Madam Web girls are in their superhero costumes. Maybe a combined total of three minutes. Blink and you'll miss them, as a matter of fact. There was an old guy behind us. He went to the bathroom. I was concerned he wasn't going to get back in time before Matt Damon's role was done in the film. This is a very small cast. I wouldn't be surprised if this film costs less than a couple million dollars to make, so maybe it'll make back its film just because of the fact that a Coen brother is attached. I believe this is Ethan's first movie on his own, and he should probably stick with his brother because uh, this is a hot mess. The plot in a nutshell is this, two lesbian gals find a briefcase mysteriously in the back of a trunk as they're taking this thing to Tallahassee to go meet up with an aunt. It's kind of like Pulp Fiction meets Dumb and Dumber meets neither of those movies because those are great, funny, fantastic, creative films and this is just miserable to sit through. And I point out that they're lesbians because that's basically what the film's about. These two getting with other girls, experimenting, trying to find themselves, trying to find love and connection. It's like Ethan went out of his way to make a movie so miserable, so uninteresting on the eyes, just because he can. Because he's made so many great films in the past with his brother. The presentation of this thing is absolutely bonkers. It takes place in the 90s, late 90s, 1999, right before Y2K is supposed to hit. Yet it has this exploitation feel to it. It's got this fish reference that can be seen throughout, like a 70s Polaroid view going on with hippie music and a lava lamp style transition between scenes. Some of the times, other times, it has a shit you not flip style transitions, Looney Tunes sound effects going like whoop, 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 I'm kind of being over the top, but I'm also dead on. It's that ridiculous. There's almost no music in the film. There's definitely not a theme song. You might hear a little bit of stuff playing on the radio, but it's almost silent in that regards. It's a lot of Two people sitting in cars, either the bad guys that are chasing them after their briefcase, because again, this has got that Pulp Fiction angle to it, chatting about uninteresting things for several minutes, or it has kind of a, a quirky setting where they go to a lesbian bar, or they go to a all black bar, which leads to absolutely no humor or really any commentary. It's just kind of there and gone. Or it's, uh, you know, one of the girls spying on someone in the back of the pool. It's just a lot of nothing for 89 minutes or less. Now, if you're thinking about bringing the kids, <laughs> this is not the movie to go to. <laughs> a lot of vibration play going on, some dildo action, um, actually quite a bit of that. Some nudity sprinkled in, not a ton of swearing, but just a lot of really bizarre edits and transitions and uh, I didn't like any of it. I honestly can't think of anything I liked. Now the lead actresses are fine. They're they're funny, not in this movie, but they are funny. You can tell they're, they're funny characters, funny actors. I just, I, I really truly have nothing but disdain for this film and that's sad to say. I would rather watch Madam Web again because at least I can laugh at how bad it is than something like this where I'm just scratching my head thinking what the fuck was he thinking with this? I was tinkering with the idea of implementing some sort of a rating scale. It was gonna be a bit like, really worth it, worth it, kinda worth it, 
worthless something like that but but uh for this one i'm just gonna say worthless it really is kind of a miserable watch i don't know who the target audience is not sure what the demographic is really really a, a head scratcher a puzzler this one was now i will say one last thing i quickly glanced at rotten tomatoes there's 140 some reviews uh by the critics it is sitting fresh at 60 some percent the regular joe schmo viewers have it at 33 percent so there's definitely a disconnect and i feel like the koa name is maybe pushing this thing positive over there I can assure you I will be giving a rotten score, but uh, let me know what you thought. Please put a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that bullshit so I can keep this channel moving in a good direction. And hopefully I see you next time. Take care.